In this presentation, we will apply overhead to jobs. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. We're first going to take a look at our Excel file to see what our objective will be. We're going to be over here in the tab EX 1.20. EX 1.20. If we take a look at the left hand side in our scenario data, we're going to be down here on uh, 120 and 130 where we have the indirect labor and uh, assigned to factory overhead. So we're going to have indirect labor. It's going to be part of our overhead. All of these items are going to be overhead as well. Indirect materials, factory utilities. And you can think of overhead as being anything that we cannot apply directly to the job for whatever reason. And therefore, we need to think about putting it into overhead and then seeing how we're going to assign it or allocate it to job. Now, if you think about a traditional job cost type of system that is typically done, by putting this information first into an overhead type of account. So we would first put it into basically uh, an overhead type of account and then apply it out, apply it out of the factory overhead using some kind of uh, preconceived allocation basis. So that's what, and if you want to use that method, it would be kind of similar to what we did with the raw materials. You can think of it as a similar way. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. But what we're going to do here is as we incur the overhead, we're going to be applying the overhead to the cost of goods sold and to the jobs as we go. So note that if you're talking about something like indirect labor, indirect materials, something like glue or something like that, so you, you can't apply it to the actual job because that would be too expensive to try to track uh, so, so that kind of item to a job, then uh, you have to use some kind of percentage method or some type of allocation method to apply it out to the job. And because the jobs are different sizes, you need some type of allocation method to apply it out, you know, properly to jobs that have different sizes. In other words, if we have three jobs open, we can't just divide it by three because the jobs may be different sizes. So you need some type of allocation method in order to, to apply out the overhead to the jobs. That's going to be the key. That's going to be the problem. Now, if you're doing this basically as you go, then you can figure out whatever allocation method you're going to use. We're going to be using the just a percentage method. We're going to say job 14 is going to allocate 19%. 33% and uh, the 48% for uh, job 16. Those three, of course, adding up to 100% as we allocate this information out. Now, uh, allocating the overhead is is going to be one of the kind of more complex type of things. There's different methods you could you could think of to allocate over, out the overhead, but that's going to be the general rule. That's going to be the general concept. We need to then take this, these indirect items that we couldn't track directly to the job, find some way that we're going to allocate them out, in this problem, we're going to allocate them out using these percentages, which are basically predetermined percentages for these projects. And as we incur these costs, we will then apply them out to the jobs that are open right now in accordance with these percentages. So, for example, uh, if we were taking this first item that we're going to be applying out, it's going to be a similar type of process. We have the indirect labor here. Indirect labor. We're going to put it into the cost of goods sold. So this is going to be labor that we can't apply directly to a particular job. This is someone, possibly a supervisor or someone that works in our warehouse or something like that, that works on all the jobs. And we can't really easily assign the, the, the time that they work to particular jobs. We're still going to, in this problem, put it to the cost of goods sold account and then credit the cash account when we pay this individual. However, we're also going to have to think about how we're going to break out that cost of goods sold and in this case, we're imagining we don't know exactly what it is, but we're going to use some type of allocation method. And our allocation method, we're going to be using these percentages. So we're taking that information and, and multiplying it times the 19%. So we took that amount and multiplied it times the 19%, took that amount, multiplied it times the 33%, and took that amount and multiplied it times uh, the, the 48%. So that's the 1,000, uh, 1,400 times the 48%. And of course, these add up then to the the amount that we had uh, put on the general ledger account so that we tie out which is the uh, 14,000. okay so also note that when we're thinking about the indirect labor we have a similar issue as we did when we, we when we had the direct labor and that is are we going to process this through payroll are we talking about an employee if so are we processing the payroll through our system and do we want to use that uh payroll items as the allocation method or are, are we going to say that they're contractors and then we pay the contractors, which will be a little bit easier for us to allocate as we pay the contractors. We're going to use the contractor scenario. 
you can also use the similar scenario we thought about last time with the direct labor which is to process the payroll and then record the transaction in a similar fashion as we had done so with the raw materials allocation uh, and, and apply it out in that fashion. We'll talk a little bit about that again as we go here, but you have those similar kind of concepts when you're dealing with um, the labor, the potential labor that you're allocating out. The difference between these two labor items are gonna be here that it's indirect. We don't know which job they're, they're working on and therefore we're gonna use that percentage method to do the allocation rather than us basically knowing where they worked and being able to allocate out directly to the jobs. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna then go back on over and we're gonna use a, the same form here. We're gonna go to the plus button up top. We're gonna be using the spend money form. So let's go on down to the spend money form. The money's gonna be spent from the checking account. So we're gonna be taking this out of the checking account and then say next. I'm gonna say a new contractor. So I'm just gonna call it contractor two this time. So we're paying a contractor. We're gonna assume it's a contractor rather than a, an employee. Uh, same scenario as, as before and then we're going to say that this happened on what did they with the 20th I think it was is that right the 20th that this happened on let's check it we're going to go back over here and say that's the 20th that this is happened yes it is the 20th okay and then we're going to pick up our item so now we want indirect and I don't think we have an indirect set up yet so what I'm going to do is add an item as we go I'm going to select the drop down here going to select the drop down we're going to say we want a new item we're going to set up a new item as we go it's going to be called indire indirect labor and then i'm going to copy that I'm going to paste that in the name it's going to be a double cited item as well so we want it going to the purchases account we don't have an indirect labor account set up here, so I'm gonna add one. So I'm gonna add an account, so we're adding an item. And now I'm going here for the purchases side, I'm gonna add an account as we go to. So now we're adding an account and we're looking for the indirect labor. Note that I jumped over here to, to the chart of accounts to pick up the number and I can see the reference number is the 580. I want it to be in that overhead type of area, so I'm gonna pick the 582. So I'm gonna go back on over and we're gonna be picking the 582 for the number Let's pick that here before I forget. So that's going to be 582 on the number, the type of account. I'm going to scroll to the type of account. We want an expense, but we want the direct cost. So it's going to be a direct cost type of account. And then we're going to have the name, which is going to be indirect labor. And you might ask, why is it indirect here? And you called it a direct cost. Because we're allocating it out to the cost of goods sold. Direct cost is basically the cost of goods sold. And so it's going to be the indirect labor as a component or part of uh, the cost of goods sold that we're allocating out. So then we're going to have the description. And I'll keep that there. We'll keep it as is. And then we'll save this. So this will add the account. So I'm going to add the account. Now we're back to the item. So we added the account up here. So there's the indirect labor. We also need the sales to make it a double-sided or two-sided item. And the sales account is going to be 4000 as always. That's going to be our income account, indirect labor in the description. That looks good. So we're going to say save. So we'll save that. So there it is. That looks good. Now we're going to pick up the amount. So if I go back on over, we're picking up the amount for job number 14, which is going to be that 2660, the 2660. So I'm going to go back on over here and say we want the price to be 2660. So it already picked up the account from the item. Now we're gonna apply it to job number 14 later. We're gonna do that at the end. So we're gonna apply these out to the different jobs and just record this on one uh, transaction form. So once again, indirect labor. So we're gonna say indirect labor. And I'm gonna pick up the second amount now, that being for the uh, 4620 that's gonna be applied to the uh, second job, job number 15. So that's 4620. And there we have that. And let's do this one more time. Indirect labor. So there we have it. And that's going to be applied. That's going to be the amount for the last job, which we had down here at the 6720. The 6720. So I'll pick that one up. So that's going to be 6720. Uh, zero. And there we have it. Now the total then adding up to that 14,000. So that looks good. Now we need to assign them to the job. So I'm going to say assign two jobs. And I'm going to assign job number 14 first. So let's go to job number 14 to do so. That's going to be this amount. So that's going to be assigned. I check it off and then say assign. 
And then I'm going to uncheck that one and check the next one. And this one needs to be assigned to job number 15. So we'll search for job number 15 and assign that to job number 15. And then say assign. And there it is. Then we'll do this one more time, unchecking this one off and checking off the next one. And we this one needs to go, yes, to job number 16. That's correct. And then we will assign it there. So there's job 14, 15, and 16. Let's go ahead and say then OK. Then we'll see them reflected over here as well, 14, 15, and 16. If we Now, if we were to record this now, note that it would be decreasing the checking account by that 14000 We're imagining we're actually paying the contractor at this point in time. Then applying the other side due to the items, to the cost of goods sold account for uh, the, the indirect labor specifically. And then it's going to go to the jobs, 14, 15, and 16. Now, note that if you did process this through payroll, let's say you put this through payroll and you paid this person because they're an employee rather than a contractor, and then you wanted to go back in and assign their time basically to the jobs in accordance with uh, some kind of um, allocation method. Then you could do so by, by doing a similar method we did before. I won't, do, I won't complete this, but just to show, we could say, all right, what, this, I'm going to say negative 14,000 here. And then this side would be going to that wages account. So in other words, wages had already been assigned here. And what we're going to do is take the expense account out of wages and just simply apply it to the cost of goods sold. So that so the net for the for the expense account for for wages for income wouldn't be different, but it would be assigned to the cost of goods sold account. And then we can allocate it to the job. That's one way you could process through the payroll without having to assign as you go through payroll. Right. You could process the payroll out and then determine how much of those wages should be assigned out. And again, I think it's probably an easier, less complex method to set up. Uh, once you set up the payroll method up, if it was through payroll, it might be easier than processing. I mean, it might be faster, but I, I think this method could uh, could be a good method to use in any case. So we're going to say it's a contractor. We're paying the 14000 like so. Let's go ahead and save this and see what then happens. So we'll record this and hopefully we'll get that uh, green item up top saying that uh, we haven't messed anything up too badly. So we got the green item. So it's green stuff. So now we're going to go to our balance sheet. Let's go to the accounting drop down. Let's open up the balance sheet to see what has happened. Going to change the balance sheet to uh, the current period. So I'm going to say let's take it out to uh, January 2020. Update that report. Then we'll scroll down in the checking account. If we go into that uh, checking account, we should see our transaction. Scrolling down and there's going to be our 14,000. So there's our 14,000 uh, transaction here. If I go back up top and I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. And I want to take a look at uh, the next report, which is going to be the income statement. To do that, I'm going to go up top. I'm going to hover over the balance sheet, right click on it, and I'm going to duplicate that tab. So now we got the balance sheet, to, and this is an extra tab. We don't need this one. I don't need that. I'm going to delete this one. We've got the balance sheet, and then we're going to go to the tab to the left where we will open up the income statement. So we're going to go to the accounting drop down and go on down to the income statement. There is our income statement for 2020. If we scroll down to the income statement, we see our indirect labor here. There's the indirect labor for 14,000. Now it's all grouped under cost of goods sold at this point because we put everything under the account type in essence of uh, the cost of goods sold and therefore it's grouped. If you want to see further subgrouping, meaning direct materials, direct labor and overhead, and the indirect labor would then be a subcategory of overhead, we would use the editing layouts. We talked about that a little bit in, in the past, but this is the way you can use a similar type of feature of grouping these together as you would have like sub accounts in uh in something like a quickbooks type of software and again there's pros and cons to either either method you're going to use sub accounts can get kind of messy after a while and, and if you use this method it might be a little bit more difficult to kind of set up but you kind of have clean you can possibly have you have more actual flexibility to to do it with that but then you would need to save you probably want to be having more custom reports having internal reports and uh, external reports for the items that uh, you want to be using so uh, we might look at that a little bit more in the grouping at a later time. But that's where it is. I'm going to go up top now and right click on this tab again. Duplicate this tab another time. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. Go scroll back up top and we're looking in the projects. Now let's go into the projects. And here's all projects. So here are all of our projects. Let's go into job number 15 or project number 15 this time. And if we scroll down, here's going to be the activity that we have. And we have entered uh, at this point the indirect labor 
So here's the indirect labor. If we were to select these three dots, we can go to the indirect labor or we can edit, uh, edit the, basically the ticket that has been created from the form, the, the money out form that we had filled out. So then let's go to our reports. So then I'm gonna go back up top. I'm gonna go to the accounting dropdown and we're gonna take a look at our uh, reports. We're going to consider our project report. So we're going to scroll down to the project reports and we want to consider that project detail report. So within the project detail report, we can sort then by opened and closed jobs. I'm just going to select all jobs and then sort this item. And then we get all the activity for the jobs. I'm going to keep this date as of the today. So I have all the activity down here and then change the dates at a later point uh, and using a different method using the filters. Then I would typically go to the reports over here and I'm going to say this every time because I think it's important to note if you put the date tab, then we're going to have the date tab and that'll allow us to see the date. Then we could sort by date if we so choose. So it's sorted by job now and then by date. So we could see what happened last year as opposed to what is happening this year per job. Then if we wanted to filter down further, we could do so with a date ranging filter going to the report settings here, for example and then and then uh, filtering down by date so we could filter down by date and then if i only want to see the stuff that happened in 2020 we can then use our date range here and say i would like 2020 stuff please from january and then going out to uh, the end of january let's go to the end of january that should do it and then say update and that'll give us our uh, reporting information for the current time period, 2020. We then have the 582 currently here. If we go to the income statement and scroll to the bottom line, we have the 582 as well. If we go to the balance sheet and we go to what's in the uh, current earnings, there's the 582 as well. So going back to the detail, we haven't included all of the, of the overhead items that we've only included thus far this uh 6720 we'll continue on with it next time and we'll go through these these a, a lot quicker they're going to be different overhead items but they're going to be alloc we're going to use the same allocation method to allocate them so remember when you're talking about overhead it could have a whole lot of different things but we're basically using the same method which is going to be our percentage method also just note that you could use different methods to allocate the overhead you could have a different like activity base to allocate there's different you can get into a lot of detail on what's the best method to allocate items uh for for overhead and have your estimates be more exact and whatnot uh so but that's a topic for a different time we're going to be allocating all the overhead items using the same percentage method here so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here